Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Old World. Uh, we are doing a little bit of pre-release magic for the latest DLC. I do super recommend this game. And uh, basically what we're doing is we are preparing for an invasion into Egypt. Now, as part of that, one of the things we want to do is to actually build a wonder. If I could find a worker uh, really quick. One of the, the wonder we want to build is we want to try to build a pantheon. Uh, it's going to cost us 34000 thousand cash we of course only have fifteen thousand um so we are slowly getting to the point where we can build a pantheon that needs to be done before we declare the war and uh, we're still in the process of actually building up our war economy which means building things like barracks you can see here this barracks will give us 2.6 training which can be used to not only recruit units but also upgrade them for example this slinger right here i could give him the marksman promotion and by stacking promotions onto a single unit, I can make him quite powerful, actually. I could even get Focus 2 to give him a chance to crit. I would like to also get some unit upgrades. That would be nice. I'm going to take... Focus is, Focus is just one of my favorite promotions because it actually makes your unit so dang powerful um, because of the chance to crit. Ooh, Besieger is a great one. Now, we already have Fierce. We could go for Brave, so this guy is specialized at attacking infantry. I'm just trying to make sure I spend a little bit of my training, uh, because you can only store 2,000 of it. So if you fail to spend it all, you know, it goes, it goes wasted. Uh, let's go ahead and build a barracks right here. It would be nice to have some extra training. They're pretty good buildings. They do take iron. They take a little bit of stone. I am willing to spend a little bit of stone on those things to prepare for the war. Okay, we now have a road leading through my almost basically my entire empire to Egypt. So reinforcement is going to be a lot easier, a lot more order efficient. It's going to take me a lot less resources to get my units into position. Let's try to improve our relationship with Judaism. The fact that they are negative opinion is hurting our happiness. So we're going to try and just build a little bit of a relationship there. Let's make sure we get our Shrine of Epidemic in the capital because that's worth four training per semester, which will massively increase the rate that we can create units. We have fully leveled this Slinger. It now has a 25% chance to crit, which I think is pretty close to... All right, 25% chance to crit. It's got uh, plus one range and it ignores the distance modifier. So it's an extremely good support unit. I wouldn't mind being able to get focused three on this chariot because that would give me a 45% chance to crit on the light chariot. And owing to the fact that this is a special unit, I do like to rely on the crit chance quite a bit. It's a fun way to play, in my opinion. Now, this light cavalry, light cavalry here, it's a bit more of a support unit, right? You can see here it's got herbalist, it's got tracker. So I'm going to give it healer so it'll auto heal every semester. And then I think that's going to be the last promotion because I don't see anything here that really helps it too much. This is more of a support unit. Um, maybe a general in charge of it could do something with it. But I think I'll take Bloodthirsty as the final promotion on it so that it's good at like doing routes and healing and being supportive. Ooh, getting a mercenary Akkadian archer could be really, really good. Let's go ahead and buy some wood. We don't want to become impious. I don't think that would be very good for us. Alrighty, let's go ahead and keep getting these fishers so we can get more luxuries on board. Okay, so we've got a warrior here with focus. And I think we would like to upgrade him to a Spearman. This would allow him to upgrade his base combat power to five. He would also gain anti-mounted two, which is a 50% damage boost. And he would his attacks would pierce, i.e. hit the target behind the target he attacks for 25% of the damage. So that seems like a pretty damn good upgrade. It's a nice step forward for my unit's capabilities. And that's actually going to be a process we go through for most of our military units is trying to just get them upgraded. Um, I think Spearmen are a great frontline unit. So I've managed to level up. I could get another point in Charisma or I could get another point in Wisdom or a point in Courage. I like the idea of getting the extra point in Wisdom. It is a very small amount of my science right now, but it will continue to grow in particular because this city is going to start getting happier. Um, and the total amount of science being produced here is actually quite a lot. Um, if we see here, I'm multiplying that science by 56%, so it's really valuable. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with a Kushite Pyramid. Yes, I don't like the spending of the stuff. However, we are getting closer and closer to being able to build a Pantheon. So maybe if I hold for a turn or two, it'll, it'll be better. I do have things I need to spend my orders on, like exploration. Um, you do get, I guess I'm going to use the word credit points. You get, you get like, um... You get credit for being a good leader by exploring and revealing tiles, so it is worth it 
to kind of like move your scouts into unknown territory. I really want to unlock, I, I, I super want to unlock land consolidation. I would love to get my groves online. I, you have no idea, right? And I would love to get my libraries online as well so I could do massive scientific stuff. And, and I would love to get drama, but I really, really need to get my archer and archery ranges online right now. So we're going to focus on composite bow. I also need to get my wood per turn up. So we can finally go ahead and get divine rule. Divine Rule will give us plus one happiness per shrine per semester, which is basically per turn. Will cost us a little bit of money, but super, super worth Divine Rule. It also means we can now adopt our pagan religion as our state religion. I think we're going to go ahead and recruit Saul here. He is a zealot. He is persecuting the hell out of Christians. This will upset Christianity for 40 semesters. They're cautious of us. We can take a small debuff to our relationship with them. That's fine. More importantly, we can adopt Kushite paganism now, finally, as our state religion. Now, uh, I'm curious as to what the effect that will have. So currently we're at minus six discontent per turn in Moreau, right? So if I go ahead and adopt Kushite paganism, I've never actually done this before. We get plus one happiness per city uh, per semester, which is nice. Yeah, it's minus one. Pretty good. I'll take it. I definitely think Kush are my favorite faction in the game right now. Okay, so we should definitely be looking to build the Pantheon. Ah, I don't have enough civics, so I'll have to wait a turn unless I were to undo the religion choice. I can't quite afford to do... I can't quite afford the Pantheon this turn, but I will be able to afford it next turn. So I'm going to undo this move. I'm going to move you there. I will adopt Kushite Paganism. And I'm going to focus on not spending any stone whatsoever. We could do a festival and get this discontent down to negative. So we start getting content. Also, we could just get a stone cutter. Oh, we've got happiness level two in here, which is giving us a, uh, let's see, 10% growth modifier. Ooh, now that's nice. All right, here we go. We are starting the Pantheon. That's going to give us plus two civics per semester per culture level in our cities, which is on average two to eight, like it's between two and eight culture or civics per turn per city which is huge and now we don't need to save our stone and we can start spending our stone more judiciously which is fantastic i'm going to start pumping semesters in my cities uh, or archives in my cities rather to try and get my science to pump because when you complete it you get one science per semester but also a 10 semester 10 science boost which while from a single city is it much of a science rush but if everyone is doing it, it'll come together really nicely. My ambassador is leveled up and I think I'm going to give him a point of wisdom. This will give a little bit of culture to all of my cities, which is really nice. Hypatia is my court scholar and I think I will give her yet more wisdom. I like that little chunk of science that I'm picking up from it. Awesome. We have completed the Heliopolis. Um, this will give us plus one order per shrine. So now our, sh our orders are insane. That's 13 orders per turn and it's going to be on, I think it's... Uh, four orders per city which is ridiculous once we hit our late game stride we're definitely becoming extremely powerful let's start building our citadel so that we can recruit the Baya archer in here nice plus eight legitimacy for building a wonder feels good the akkadian archer i think i will want to level up focus as well i'm going to be heavily focusing my units around attacking cities and little else so things like besiegers, I need to unlock onagers, I need to unlock archers, I need to massively update my military, I need to get generals into position. It's the whole process of activating a war machine here that will take some time. Let's legitimize our grandson. I think it's a good move. Let's get another cult in the capital. I love the idea of pushing cult shrines forward. We're a polytheistic, cultic people. All right, we're going to start the construction of an onager in the city of Surarab. We have three militia defending Ushara, and it might be a good idea to have a few Byream support units. However, the training in this city is very weak. So I think I will focus this around other pursuits like building my archives. You see, on finishing archive two, we'll get 20 science. And it is going to be one hell of a process to upgrade all of our units to the level that they need to be. Hey, we finally contacted Greece. Um, yeah, share freely. Nice to meet you, Greece. Greece could be a useful, a useful compatriot. The good news is the high price of stone and my extremely good income of it means I can sell stuff to continue to buy wood to upgrade my military units. I think the vast majority of my army is now upgraded into archers or better. However, I am running into training 
um, issues. I'm not making enough training, so we'll need to kind of get the empire oriented in the direction we want. We also need to start positioning along the route. And I reckon that's going to involve quite a bit of pushing spearmen forward right now. Because quite literally, they will be the tip of the spear um, of the assault. Looks like our governor of Moreau has died, so we will need a new governor for that. I am now known as the Fountainhead, thanks to all the improvements and wonders I have built. I do think tolerance would be a fantastic, fantastic boost to our happiness. However, I think the free onager for a single turn would allow us to do significant things with our military that we're about to undertake. Let's choose a new governor for the city. I think Saul is a good pick, especially if we're going to start training military units out of the city, which we will do. So I think choosing that is reasonable. Now, because you can start getting a few Axemen, the nice thing about Axemen is they actually counter Spearmen. And they're quite good defensively because they start with Guard 1. So they're anti-polearm. They're pretty good counter units to the polearm unit. So I think maybe going Axemen here for a few of these guys. We have our first Onager. We're going to get another one next turn. And I'm also going to rush out one more. So we'll have three Onagers to bring to the fight at Badet. The assault force is in position. We should be able to sweep into Bedeath pretty easily. Let's have a look and see what a war declaration might require. Yeah, we might declare war in the next turn or two. I don't need a free archer, but it might be good to get access to the maceman, which is another uh, type of infantry that is actually specifically anti-infantry. Um, it's actually an upgrade to the axemen, so that could be a really nice boost. And does in fact lead to the swordman and the pikeman. So I do think the maceman's a good upgrade here. We've got Zoroastrian descent. Let's try to improve our re relationship with Zoroastrianism. And I'm going to train up my grandson to be a warrior. So the question is, do we want to enact pilgrimage or holy war? Pilgrimage gives us plus two science per grove and plus five gold per turn per city with my religion. Or we can go for holy war, which allows us to use money to hurry units. I like the idea of holy war. Also plus one free random promotion. Seems pretty good. So I think I'm going to enact the ambition to holy war. Let's declare war on Egypt. Boom. We are now at war. And we get our first kill here. Boom. For a single order, we can pillage. I think we'll make the families happy. I'm not going to do a whole lot of forced marching in the opening moves of the war. Because I still have a lot of units I need to upgrade. Let's attack the city. It looks like it's already been damaged, so we can bring it down quite a bit. Yeah, so if we can get up to Archive 4s, that's 8 signs per semester. That's pretty dang good. And it's a nice boost of science too along the way. So I'm going to start working on those archives to really, really pump science and to push for some of these late game abilities. Because like this costs like a thousand science. So we need just so much. And I really want to push for that late game. Very, a lot of my workers are going to be sitting still for a while while we conduct this war. I'm going to be very interested to see how Egypt decides to counterattack. Egypt is at war with Babylon, which is interesting. We also finished the Via Recta Souk. So that's growth, culture, and a little bit of happiness. And all of our cities get a bonus to their happiness per city luxury. I think the city of Maru could use some pearls. It's a little bit behind culturally, so we want it to grow culturally a little bit quicker. I also think it would be good to put a governor in charge of the city if we had one. And I think this guy is strict, which will help new infantry units be a higher level. Let's get a woodcutter specialist and a woodcutter specialist and a farmer specialist in here. Mostly I'm looking for that little trickle of extra wood because right now I'm using so much wood for my units. It's rough out there to the point where it might be worth it to consider vassalage over centralization to reduce my unit consumption. I think that would be a really good switch right here, just particularly for wood. The rest of the things aren't that important, like we're able to maintain, um, but it will become more difficult as time goes on. So something that's really important here is to make sure we kill things. Things that are alive can do damage. And this is a game where damage can be focused onto units. The AI is not going to sit there and let you slowly siege down their cities. You need to strike fast. Let's get the city surrounded. We will attack and attack. We can gain an officer in Surab, which I like, or a court soldier. Court soldier can be made into a general, which is fantastic. Plus she's giving me a huge boost to my training capabilities. We need to keep hammering this city. Bedette is in bad shape. Let's unlimber. So next turn, this thing will be able to obliterate the city if it needs to. We're going to move archers up as well. And now that the city's defenses are down, this archer will have a much harder time doing damage. Let's form a new battle line of spearmen on the right here. 
We don't need to kill those workers, that's fine. They are not what I would consider to be important targets. The good news is, as we pump our military across the border, the, um, oh yeah, let's add a general. Who is that new person I got? Yeah, you. You can heal the neutral territory. You can be in charge of this archer. Oh damn, yeah. See those axemen? They really wreck your spearmen. But my hope is that Egypt has been fighting with Babylon so long that they don't really have a military that A, is in position and B, actually really good at fighting. All right, so Onager is going to blast the city to bring the walls down. Boom. And now this guy is vulnerable to attack. So let's smash him with my archers and then finish him with the chariot. And there's a silly old worker sitting here in the way. And boom, we have captured this city. After four turns, it will become our city. And then we can heal up and move on. Let's begin pushing further south. Let's use this Axeman to deal with this Spearman. Then we'll assist him with a citizen warrior. Let's get the Shrine in Malul over here. More Shrines in Malul for the Orders. We definitely need to get these Shrines up. All right, let's see what the counterattack looks like. I do see an Archer over here. I do see Disciples. There's a Spearman running around here. It looks like he managed to heal or something. My Chancellor is leveled up. I think getting a slight boost to growth in all of our cities would be nice. Um, and it looks like this city is under attack, mostly from Byremes. So I think if I if I can rush out an Onager here in the next turn or... T oh, you can't hurry if the city's damaged. Okay, let's hurry an Onager from this city maybe. Next turn I can hurry an Onager and get it over here to start hitting these boats. All right, we're going to start building courthouses in Moreau. This is going to give us a huge boost in our um, civics per turn. I think in total, what is this, a 20%, 50%, and a 100% civics boost if I can build all three of them. And these can lead to scribes who give you civics. And then these scribes can actually give you other benefits as you level them up. So just a great way to get extra civics. So let's start with the um, courthouse. I'm going to force march this archer over to this Kushite pyramid and promote him with focus and then start attacking. It might not sound like much damage, but an archer just chipping away will help a lot. We finished the citadel in Moreau, meaning we can now upgrade these um, units. So for example, the light chariot can become a mounted lancer. The mounted lancer is quite a bit better than some of my other units. Like it'll have an eight base combat strength, which is a ridiculously good unit, as is the Chimerian archer, um, it has Splash, Sentinel, and Guard. So this thing is ridiculous. It also means that I can start to recruit Beya Archers in the capital, which I am going to go ahead and prioritize because these are my unique units, right? They're, they're powerful, right? They start with Volley. They do extra damage if they're adjacent to another Beya Archer. They have Pierce. They have Sentinel. They have Guard. Like, these are powerful units that I want to bring to the table. All right, so I got all my workers working. Let's start moving the military again. Um, now, this is where the chariot's vision is going to come in quite handy because it can explore on the front line in the same way a scout could. So we found the target. Onagers have a range of four. One, two, three, four. So I can position my onagers forward in these two positions, unlimber them, and we can begin the siege of Persopdu. We do need to defend Bedet for sure. And we also need to start thinking about reinforcements, which is where the Baya Archer comes in, and also these two units. I'm going to keep a small contingent of three archers and three spearmen to hold this. This guy's hurt, so he doesn't really count as a unit right now. Um, but the rest of my military is going to continue to move. It's just so we, we don't suffer from counterattacks, because we want to get down in here, take out Perswap. Persopdu, and then we you threaten their capital, which would be terrifying if I was playing as Egypt right now. Our poor little chariot's taking damage, but it was a support unit, so I don't mind it dying. Although I would prefer if the oligarch didn't die. Yeah, oligarch, um, Telekami the Younger died, Circus Maximus and Colosseum have been built. I think it does make sense to take land consolidation, finally, unless we want to go for tolerance. Land consolidation it is. Yeah, I'm going to send my grandson out to explore. Go find some stuff. Okay, so it looks like they're mounting a reasonable defense here. That's going to require me to pull units from this front line. But it also shouldn't be a problem for me to get a whole bunch of kills here. And getting kills is the important thing. If your enemy has units, you're in trouble. I think this elephant is going to represent a huge threat. So I'm going to use my onager to do damage to him. And then I'm going to position Spearman in front. All right, let's bring the mounted lancers in and start moving the archer too. Would love to have, add a general to this, but I don't quite have the training yet. Still building the economy behind this war machine. 
I'm expecting to lose a Spearman this turn, but I think as long as I'm killing more units than I'm losing, in particular using the AoE attacks of the Onagers, I think I'm in good shape. Okay, if I Onager the Elephant, boom, I can bring the Lancer in to kill the Elephant. We capture Bidet next turn. Now that there's an Onager in that city, we kind of have to break it. It's an unfortunate reality. Attack there, move in. You take over this tile, step an archer forward, shoot, step an archer forward, shoot, shoot the city. You step forward, shoot the city. Yeah, the city is suffering a grim fate right now. The screams of the people I'm liberating um, are ringing in my ears. So Egypt is definitely weaker than me right now. For sure, at least according to this, right? Their power ranking is weaker than me, which means I have more military, I believe. All right, let's take a quick look at the city of Yam. Which group would be best in charge of it? If we take a look at the resources and urban improvements, I don't think it's actually that important. Let's do the hunters right now. Um, but the good news is we now have a place where we can heal our troops near the front line. So as long as they survive an attack, we can get them back up and running. All right, let's onager the city and then we can get rid of the actual onager and take over the city, capturing it. Oh, there's a worker there. How clever of you. So we can... Hmm, we've breached the city. Uh, and unfortunately, rather than give up their freedom, the zealots have, uh, you know, committed mass suicide. Well, thanks for the loot. All right, let's pop back and do some healing. Some of these troops. I also need to deal with this stuff here. And I think the onager is well placed to finish him off. Also, you get nice culture for getting kills. Uh, let's get the Shrine of Apidemic over here. Apparently I have a caravan. I could do a caravan mission to probably Babylon. It'd be the right move. I need to keep them happy with me. I don't even know if someone settled that city site over there. All right, this city needs like a serious amount of workers to rebuild it because it's uh, still being assimilated. We did get the Archive 4 in here and we are slowly building up happiness levels, which you'd love to see. I have plenty of iron, so I think I'm going to start recruiting Macemen. This miner will take a single turn and it will speed up the recruitment of my macemen by a little. So that'll be nice. Let's wait a turn before we continue the advance. Looks like he's coming in for a fight with a maceman. It's fine. He sets himself up for a pretty strong counterattack here. As long as we kill more than a single spearman worth of units, we actually come out on top from this attack by him. The AI is really good at that. They're really good at poking out, getting a kill, and then poking back. So I don't think I can delay my Odeons any longer because I need the culture to get the victory points. So I'm gonna go ahead and take drama. Rome wants a national alliance. I'm gonna decline that diplomatic offer. I don't necessarily hate Zoroastrianism. I'm pretty okay with most religions. Now that I have my own religion established, it's okay if you are here. You are somewhat welcome. All right, let's blast the maceman once. Twice, and we're going to do an archer assault on him. Boom, to get him dead. And then I'm going to push really hard with my Chimerian archer on this guy right here. And then we can get up and start smashing. It's going to make life really difficult for them. We're not even using our melee units yet. Now we're using our melee units. Let's move the Onager up here. We will unlimber. But right, I'm expecting a heavy counterattack from Egypt this turn. However, at this point, I've taken two of their cities, so I should be able to, through pumping units with civics, be able to ex do a lot of damage really quickly. I should be able to tear through them. Okay, I think it would be good to get conscripts because these are an upgrade from the militia. They have two more combat strength and they're also anti-mounted and pierce. They are a little bit more expensive, but they are better. It'll also give us access to volunteers and professional army. So we're going to go ahead and unlock manor. While I do like horsemen, I think I prefer to have manor. Let's hurry out another Beya archer and start pushing this one to the front line because they actually work better in a group. Um, and I think it's time that I got my specialists in the city of Maru. So I'm going to get this growth specialist, this growth specialist, and this growth specialist, which should lead us to getting more citizens, which should lead us to being able to make more specialists. The city will be quite busy on that front for a while. I will prioritize getting the forum, however, because this will give it more civics, thus training these units faster. I'm now going to start spamming out Odeons to get a lot of culture, which should hopefully push my cities up into a higher cultural tier, getting me more victory points. All right, let's pull this Spearman back to get a heal. I think anyone below half health deserves to be healed. The element needs to go, so let's prioritize that. I need to get rid of this archer as well. I need to get this 
Spearman, could you get around here, shoot that elephant. You got the crit on him, actually. So you get that kill. I super want to kill this. Oh, what's this, a swordsman? Those are scary, but I need to kill this unit as well. So let's prioritize killing the um, Onager, because it's going to do a lot of AoE, big painful damage. Okay, we made some pretty good advances. We killed a couple of units. We're pushing into Waset and Per Hathor. We've also got units coming out in the back line here, macemen and apprentice officers. We're still building infrastructure. I'm trying to keep my build, my workers busy because that will lead to more orders. I'm up to 76 orders per turn, which I don't think I need to explain to you is a lot. Um, but Egypt is crumbling as far as I can tell. Like they are fighting, do not get me wrong. But the fact that I've managed to take two cities off them and I have a stronger military than them, and I'm producing a military, puts me in a very strong position. Now, things like this swordsman are a problem for me, for sure, but they're not insurmountable problems. We definitely need to kill this catapult before it gets to shoot, and we're gonna unlimber these two. We probably need to take a slightly more defensive stance, but we could definitely kill this catapult and this maceman, so that's two kills. I'm gonna use forced march on these two beja archers to get them into the fight real fast as reinforcements, because they'll do serious work if they can get up there. So let's see what Egypt can mount as a counterattack here. Now keep in mind, this, this is a cheating AI. They have like extremely good stats. So my poor little archer is gonna die, but that's okay. We got good use out of them. They get a huge boost to their economies, meaning we need to fight up. Like if they kill one unit, we need to kill two, just to be even with them. If they have four cities, we need eight. Like that's the level of um, advantage that they technically have. Let's go ahead and go for Doctrine here to get Tolerance. That's a lot of bonus happiness here, so I will head towards Doctrine. We've captured another city. We can go ahead and give this to the Artisans, I think. That's fine. One of my governors has leveled up as well. Elegant, Warlike, or Affable. I think Warlike is going to give you the best benefit here. So this Swordsman needs to die. We're going to attack him twice with my Onagers. Hit him with an Archer. Getting close with this Archer will let me do more damage. Also, Krakamani has leveled up, my husband. I think we just go for another upgrade to the damage, so he has a better chance of just doing damage. And we'll get the Lancer to finish them off. We'll move the Maceman over to smash this guy. And we're slowly cutting our way through the enemy forces. Slowly cutting. Let's get the city of Persopti repaired so it actually gets some yields going, because a damaged city actually has a hard time building basically anything. All right, let's go ahead and upgrade some of these conscripts. It's actually a fairly cheap upgrade because the unit will get stronger without really requiring resources, which allows you to defend your empire pretty efficiently, actually. The thing about this game is that eventually it always morphs into a war game, which is fundamentally 4X games are and probably should be war games. Now, he thinks he can kill an Onager here. He's going to bring in some serious firepower to do that, but it will cost him for doing this. My goal will be to kill all three of these units that he just brought to the front. He thinks he can kill that maceman. Probably can. Mm, he thinks he can kill an archer. I mean, the archer is in the open, so it is possible. We do now have the Pantheon giving me a huge boost to civics across my, the board, which means I'll be able to rush things pretty quick. So my heir is governing Kandruka. I think I'll go for the wisdom. Plus five science across my empire is good. We're up to 200 science per turn. It's a really good amount. We gotta get some kills here. Let's deal with this chariot with my two Beya archers. And we need to deal with this maceman. Maceman dealt with, that's a kill. Fall you back to the city to grab a quick heal. Move you up. We are out killing them. Good news. I'm gonna pull this Onager back to heal. I wanna keep him alive. He's been doing great work. He's close to a promotion. Eltuina got its farmers. It still has three citizens cracking around. We need to have a little bit of a think about how we wanna spend our time in here. It's a terrible city for recruiting military units right now, but if we were to build some miners, it would help. On the other hand, the, the archives would give me a lot of science. Let's get those archives. Being able to tech up is, is, is a valuable thing. Let's start building theaters. So the Odeon gives you culture, the theater gives you culture and happiness, and the amphitheater gives you culture, happiness, and um, also elder poets. Now, elder poets are good if I, could get the, if I could get the game to be nice here. They give you a lot of culture. So this is going to be how we scale into the late game for a lot of these cities. All right, we're looking good. Egypt is still weaker. They have erudite knowledge in comparison to us, but I'm hoping that that will change over time, especially as we conquer their land. Now, Assyria is getting very close to a victory here, but so am I. I feel like me and Syria are like, probably maybe not exactly on the same level, but I would say we're close to a similar level. 
Taliot is my grandson, and he's a legitimized bastard. Um, I kind of want to give him more courage. Let's have a look at what science options we have. We could go for coinage. Being able to build libraries might be nice. I think swordsmen are going to be a significant upgrade for us, so let's prioritize that. The pathway to swordsmen. I don't know if we really need longbowmen. I would rather probably train my unique unit. However, the mangonel would also be awesome, so I'm going to prioritize that too. Let's go ahead and unlock scholarship to get access to the library for the science. And we just got our first worker in Bidet, which means we're going to need to sit here and start reworking this entire city to try and get an advantage out of it. But I tell you what, I'm going to call that the end of this video. The Siege of Egypt is on. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.